In this video, I have an oversteer related moment. Then I have an understeer related moment. And a wild Danny DC2 appears in a Peugeot. And this orange mini goes swimming around Blyton Park. Right, I'm sat in the mini. VXR is still broken and I've got a track date on Friday. The Mini went through most of the remaining rear disc and pads that were on it at Snetterton the other week. So I'm off to Euro Car Parts to get replacements for those. I'm going to replace that really quickly, probably tomorrow. And then aside from slightly cooked brake fluid, which should be fine for another track day, we're good to go. And then after the track day, we'll do the brake fluid and oil probably as well. Just because for a bone stock Mini, it's had a lot of hammer in the last three weeks. I'm going to head to Euros now, get the parts and get them fitted. The pads we're going with are stock Brembo's because although it might seem like it, this is not a track car. I'm only using the Mini while my Astra VXR is out for the count, so it's getting normal road brakes to keep it nice and quiet for street use, since this is my girlfriend's daily commuter car. Getting the caliper off of the carrier is as simple as undoing two screws using a pair of spanners. Then we can pop the brake pads out and use a Torx bit to remove the caliper carrier so we can get the disc off. As always when working on minis though, it can't be that simple and we have to use a convoluted series of extensions and a universal joint to actually get access since they put the damper directly behind the caliper carrier bolts. As you can see, the old disc isn't actually that thin but it is coming up on the limit that BMW prescribe and they do all the regular servicing on this car. So since the discs are pretty cheap, since they're very small on the Mini, we thought we might as well switch them out while doing the pads, just so they don't keep telling us we need them done and quoting us 500 pounds for the pleasure. Here I'm pulling out the sliders and just re-greasing them and cleaning them to make sure they go in and out smoothly and don't seize up in the future. Then they can just be slid back in. It's a good idea to grease everything that touches the back of the pad, just so you don't get any unwanted squealing in the future. Now it's time to reassemble the brakes, which is just the reverse of what we did to take them apart. But we do need to remember to open the brake reservoir and wind the caliper back in so that we can fit new pads since they're going to be thicker than the ones that were previously installed. Finally the caliper is reinstalled and the screws are done back up just tight with a couple of spanners and then checked with a torque wrench before lowering the car back down to do the other side. The other side is just more of the same, so I won't make you watch the whole thing. But the final thing to do is to syringe out the excess brake fluid, since we've pushed a bunch back into the reservoir when we winded back the calipers and we're above the max line. And that's it, we're all done with the brake change, so it's time to pack everything up, load up the boot, grab our helmet and gloves and head off to the track. Blyton is only an hour from my house, so not hard to get to, but I did brim the tank on the way, just to make sure I didn't have to get fuel partway through the day. And since this was my first time here, it's pretty cool seeing the Janetta headquarters on the way in, although their driveway is like an absolute bomb hey, site. we're at Blyton Park, hope you can see me, we're at 360. We've just done a sight and lapse, I didn't record them, because the same every time, more or less. We're just going to head out for a few more laps, I don't know if you can see, there's a Mini next to me, there's Sean's Mini at the back. Um, so we've got three of us <laughs> this session, of course, immediately talking to the other mini drivers. It's sketchy with the weather and how twisty and tight the track is. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to do my best not to spin it. There's plenty of runoff and 
little escape routes and stuff which they show you in the briefing. Still it's a spooky track, you don't go too fast but you're on the brakes a lot because it's so tight. Anyway, enough talking, let's go out and do some laps. someone to follow but they let you out all spaced out on this track. So we got that double apex through here. Long left hander to up here if the car wants to step out when you basically lift off. So yeah we're doing 70 down here. Then relatively heavy braking zone with some standing water, breaks way too early, which is better than late on your first lap out. We've got a nice big puddle there, stretch of it, driver's windscreen, power out, it's been very steady through the corners, but we can always power out of them and have some fun even while we're warming up to the track. So that's decent entry speed, 45, 50 ish. not that bad once you get out, it's just, well that is when you understeer right to the outside, so keeping that tight I think will get us more speed down this bit. I do want to follow someone in a similar car, just so I know what to, where to go basically. So much standing water. section. manage the car, less predictable. Again, I have no idea how to go fast through this bit, especially with that puddle on the inside, doing that every time.
like with the traffic, we are not going to get a good hot lap in. I'll try one more time. But, okay, this guy's going in. Oh, it's been red flag. Don't know what happened there. No cool down lap, which is not amazing. So that's it for the first session. Um, I might update you on what that red was for if I find out. But yeah, the, the laps that are quick are good while they're quick. It's just as soon as you come up on another car, especially if it's on slicks, there's just no getting around them. There's like one safe spot to pass. They said there's a few in the briefing, but no one's indicating at them. Yeah, we'll catch up with Sean and then see what the red was for, I guess. The red flag was Cleo spun off, I think. Um, he came back in under his own power. So it can't have been too bad. We've given it 15, 20 minutes, chatted to the guys from Canberra and Combustion a bit and the other Mini, just chat shit for a while. Um, let the brakes cool down because we didn't get a cool down lap. And this Mini particularly um, has glazed the pads. The brake feels not particularly amazing, but we can make it work. So we're in sport. Stability off this time. Because I think that could be to blame for some of the extra sort of hammer on the brakes. See if we can keep up with Sean. Here we go. stoppers on the Astra and bring that and not have to worry about fade at all like this is why I've been thinking 360 mil or something instead of the usual 345s just so I know I'm getting my money's worth out of track days I don't have to worry about will it stop coming up to a corner or will it stop for the next one if I actually go as fast as I can go because that's my issue at the minute now this is fun like you could probably do most of that flat in a car that's only 190 brake. Miss the apex there just because I'm not actually cooking it. I'm trying to catch up to Sean to have a bit of a play. Yeah, that's under theory. Tried second and it just wanted to go left. That's his traction control, all this breaking up.
But after that lap, with stability off, the car's actually handling it fine. Brakes aren't disappearing after five laps, which is much better. I still worry, like, you're heavy braking from 80 like four times in a lap, and then all of the rest of the braking that isn't from 80. Definitely want to come back with something that can stop repeatedly on, you know, like proper race pads next year, I guess. I'll have to wait, get some good brakes on the VXR. But so far it's going well. On that session, Sean did have a bit of an excursion where he had a meeting with one of the cones on the inside of the chicane, but there was no serious damage done. Just both of the other minis were really struggling for rear end grip That's with the so slicks happy. they were on. The guys on slicks in the wet have another completely other ball game to deal with. Let me pass. excluding the time it takes to get back in and turn the camera off so by the time we're back in nearly a 20 minute session including the cool down i do need to check the pressures i've not touched them all day again which i did at snap and it's skipping at high speed like it could do with 5 psi taking out or something i'm assuming i'm running like 40 plus when they're hot so that's something to check That was a pretty good session towards the end. I really enjoyed that. And with another session done and starting to find as much speed as I really could around the track given the conditions, it was just about time for lunch which we'd pre-ordered at the start of the day. The two minis performed a weird mating ritual. Since Sean's 12 volt port wasn't working and he needed to pump up his front tyres a bit. And then it was about time to head out for some laps in the afternoon. Glasses are fogging up. Right, we're done with lunch. I should have really done some vlogging. So it's not just all in-car stuff, but... Yeah, we're done with lunch. Nice burger and chips. Hopefully that don't come back up. Sean's disappeared to get some fuel. So, and with this other Mini, <laughs> do a bit of chasing. Although they're on slicks, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, 
at the moment. We just didn't have enough brakes. I braked no later than usual. I'm braking at the sign, sometimes after it, and it normally makes it around fine. That time, we just carried way too much speed. You know, it, it locked up a bit, felt ABS, but yeah, so normally coming into this, I can break from about 80 here and it'll turn in, but it just wasn't doing. I did the same as usual, started turning in on the brakes to keep the weight over the front, eased off the brakes, eased onto the steering, but we we're already going too fast and I've not braked any less than usual. I don't know if it's the conditions or the brakes. So run out of front brakes, overheated tyres, so there's no grip on the tyres. I'm not a good enough driver to tell why that happened, or experience, you know, I don't know. So that's a nice cool down lap done. After that squeaky bum moment. That were an interesting one. Just checking the pressures for the first time today after lunch. End of that session, 40 PSI. Should have dropped these earlier, really. I think they're wearing fine, but the um, thing is, I don't know how you let air out, if you can even. If that little yellow button in the middle does it. Oh yeah. So, so if we aim for the mid turn, that's 35. 2.2 bar, let's say. Rather than the 40 we were just running. We might see them front grip issues start to go away. It's roasting the brakes, just have stopped working again. It's my main enemy. We are on stock pads, stock discs. Even with the horrific understeer, the car can go faster, but then after four laps pushing, well, I don't know if it can. With the horrific understeer, I don't think it can go faster. So I'm trying to make up time in the braking zones where I know I can push harder and, and go deeper, like the second chicane. Yeah, second chicane, I could be braking like another second later or so because I'm having to come off and then foot back down on the brake to get the weight over the front to turn it in, which isn't ideal. It's just you don't want to go too late and end up off the track sideways like I just almost was. So I'll drop this other front tyre and then take it back out and see if there's any improvement. Great then, we're off back out after setting the tyre pressures on the front. Um, should be a bit better now. We're at 40 PSI, which is just too much. I talked to the Canberra and Combustion guys, and they both seemed on board with the idea of 35, because I have no idea about setting tyre pressures. I just neglected to at Snap the other week, uh, and had the same problem the front washing out all the time. So, I can turn traction off and see how this goes. Yeah, I'm sure Danny's out in this white Peugeot thing, so I'd like to have a play with that. I don't know if he's passenger in or driving it. We'll wait for his green light. We have got that plug thing behind us, so we might let it pass.
flat line or braking off line, turning in off line, which I haven't even thought about doing all day, if I'm honest with you. I can then reach the track like that. Because we're both front wheel drive, we're both having the same uh, front grip deficit, I think. skating at this point so that might be it for me for today in general I might get some passenger laps in Sean's Mini I'm being told tyre pressure low stop carefully by the car we've got 33 psi I think it's just because they've cooled down 33, 31, 32 that's fine I don't know what its problem is It's 20 to 4 now, track day ends at 5, um, I don't think we're going to stay much longer. I think we're going to get one more session in. Like, it's wet, the Mini's running out of front tyres. I'm basically, I can't go any faster, it's just washing out on the way out of corners now. I think also because I've got up to speed and the entry speeds are as good as they'll get, and the braking points are as good as they'll get. So me trying to push with the throttle on the way out is not helping, it's just slowing me down. And just walking around the pits, the cafe's close, so there's nowhere to stand now. Um, although it was nice while it was open. So we're just saturated, my shoes are wet, <laughs> the inside of the car gets wet every time I come in and my glasses steam up. I think I'm gonna get one more session in, not that I'm gonna go any faster or, yeah, I'm just gonna have a few more laps for the road and then head off. Final laps of the day, I've just said on the old vlogger machine. Just a bit too wet, a bit too slippy. You push any harder, to get any more out of it, both in terms of like money's worth and you know, we've had as fun, and it's just going to be more of the same, or you're going to push your luck too far and break it. So, head home while we've still got everything in one piece and we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves without getting any more wet.
tiptoeing, not actually driving the car, you know. So that is it for our track day at Lighton. So I might not have any interior videos of them laps, but thankfully I'd asked Sean to go up on the berm thing next to the track and get some exterior shots. And I slid it into the corner in front of him like every time. And the photographer was there as well. So should have a nice thumbnail too. Hopefully I can get the footage off the Insta360, but that seems to have frozen and not saved. So we'll see. So it thinks it's still recording, but the stop button doesn't do anything. And last time it did that, it lost the file. But yeah, we're gonna head home, maybe get some ice cream, maybe not. It's already cold, it's not exactly ice cream weather. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, all that, and I'll see you in the next one. Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to be my own worst enemy There's no risk if you don't try at anything So I'ma just get by in everything See you in the next life, have to be a better me I don't think that my head's on straight Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x-ray What's wrong with me? I just feel way Pushing on my chest and it squeeze till I suffocate Better change my mindset, meditate It's pretty cool that I'm alive and have better days I could walk, see, here, I should celebrate Think I could change my mind, maybe elevate Living life, every day, late at night Not okay, all I want